we have applied the Euler method to a few simple model problems and so far the results have looked fairly promising. There's been an approximation error but by and large the numerical approximations look very similar to the true solution of the differential equations. So to speak the qualitative behavior of the numerical approximations and the true solutions are very similar. We've also seen that under a few mild assumptions on the differential equation, the approximations that are produced by the Euler method get closer and closer to the true solution as I keep reducing the step size. We have mathematically proven that convergence behavior by our error estimate. The error estimate has given us an upper bound on the approximation error and the step size h is a factor in that upper bound. So as I keep reducing the step size, the upper bound decreases, so I've got a guaranteed reduction of the error. That error estimate is, of course, a purely theoretical result, but it is supported by our numerical experiments so far. However, in this video, we're going to take a look at another model problem, which looks, again, very simple, but where the Euler method actually performs rather badly. So let us suppose I've got the Cauchy problem u prime of t equal minus alpha u of t with initial condition u of 0 is equal to 1. Alpha in this context is some positive constant. That is a very simple model problem that we can use to test the Euler method and see how it behaves. And of course we already know the exact solution to that model problem, namely it's simply u of t equal exponential of minus alpha t. Okay, let's suppose I apply the Euler method to that simple model problem. At this point, you might pause the video and think for a few seconds about what is the iteration formula for the Euler method. By now, we should be able to find out what the iteration formula is. Okay. The iteration formula for the Euler method is as follows. Suppose I've already obtained an approximation u of k at some time step tk, then the approximation of u at time tk plus 1, which we call uk plus 1, is defined as follows, namely uk plus 1 is equal uk minus h times alpha times u of k. And okay, I can apply some minor simplification to that formula. So I write the update formula also as 1 minus h times alpha times u of k. So in some sense for the simple model problem, the Euler method is extremely simple. Namely, I start with u1 and I keep multiplying that with the factor 1 minus h times alpha. I start with u0 and multiply it with 1 minus h times alpha to get u1. Then apply that value again with h with 1 minus h times alpha to get u2. Multiply this with 1 minus h times alpha to get u3, and so on and so on. The behavior of the explicit Euler method depends on the ratio of h and alpha. And depending on this ratio, you actually see quite interesting behavior, much of which unfortunately is quite bad behavior, as we are going to see soon. The difficulties that we encounter with the Euler method for that model problem will lead us to another method for ordinary differential equations, which is known as the implicit Euler method. The exact solution, u of t, is the exponential of minus alpha times t. So that function is going to be a smooth decay, starting at u0 and decaying towards 0. And as we've seen, the update formula for the Euler method is uk plus 1 equal 1 minus h times alpha times uk. And how this approximation actually looks like depends on how h compares to alpha. If h is larger than 2 over alpha, And then the numbers produced by the Euler method will assume growing positive and negative values. 
we see some oscillation around zero and this oscillation gets stronger and stronger over time. Let's illustrate this with a few graphs. Suppose that alpha is equal to 10 and that we're interested in the time interval from zero to five. So the differential equation is u prime of t equal minus 10 times u of t. The initial condition at time t equal zero is still equal one. And what you see here is an approximation using the Euler method. The step size here just happens to be slightly larger than two over alpha. And whatever that is supposed to be, it is absolutely nothing like an exponential decay. Instead, we see that the numerical approximation oscillates between positive and negative values. And in fact, that oscillation grows stronger and stronger over time. As I keep decreasing age, for example, if I hit age equal two over alpha, then the Euler method changes again. Namely, I've got an oscillation between precisely two values, one and minus one. You can tell this from the update formula. If age is equal two over alpha, we can plug this in and we get that one minus h times alpha simplifies to just minus one. As we decrease the step size and set h equal two over alpha, which is just one over five, we get into this regime where we have got oscillating behavior. We start at one, go down to minus one, go up to one again, go down to minus one again, and so on. So the value of the next iterate in the Euler method is simply the negative of the previous value, which explains this oscillation be behavior between one and minus one. Then again, if h is strictly in between one over alpha and two over alpha, we still see an oscillation behavior, but these oscillations will dampen down and eventually the, the oscillation dies off as we converge towards zero. In fact, if you plug in h from this range of values into the update formula, then we see that uk plus one is obtained from uk by multiplication with a negative value that is in between zero and minus one. So it's a negative value, but the magnitude of that negative value is smaller than one, strictly smaller than one. So we still see oscillation, but the oscillation dampens off. Next, what happens if h is equal one over alpha? Well, then the numerical, numerical approximation immediately drops off to zero. Here we see the numerical approximations produced by the Euler method for step sizes strictly in between one over alpha and two over alpha. In these two examples, we see that we still have this oscillating behavior between positive and negative values, but as the step size decreases, this oscillating behavior dies off rather quickly and we approach zero as time goes by. You can clearly see this by simply plugging in this value in the update formula. We decrease the step size further in our numerical example. And for h equal one over five, we get this graph here. So we clearly see that the numerical approximation starts at the initial value one. And after one time step, it dies off immediately and stays at zero. So as far as dk goes, that graph at least gets the gist of it. As I reduce the step size below the threshold of one over alpha, the numerical approximations start to resemble actually the decay behavior of the true solution. Still, the approximation behavior is not exactly great. And I need comparatively small time steps to make the graph resemble the true solution. Finally, if we decrease the step size h below one over alpha, then we are in what we might call the convergence regime. Only for step sizes that small, we actually are going to see a reasonable behavior of the Euler method, where the graphs that we produce start to resemble the true solution. Now, this has got an unfortunate consequence, namely for large alpha, we need a very small step size to get a reasonable approximation of our solution u of t. The bitter consequence is that for large values of alpha, 
we need lots of computational efforts corresponding to the many small steps that we take in order to get a reasonable approximation over some time interval of interest. We still have our Cauchy problem, u prime of t is equal minus alpha times u of t with the initial condition u at zero is equal to one. The exact solution is still this nicely decaying function u of t equal exponential of minus alpha t. But this time I take a look at another numerical method for ordinary differential equations. Instead of the Euler method, which is also known as the explicit Euler method, I took a look at what is known as the implicit Euler method. The iteration formula for the implicit Euler method is here in the third line on the screen. It looks very similar to the explicit Euler method, but there's a minor difference. And you might pause the video right now to spot the difference. Just like with the explicit Euler method, let's assume I already have uk, the approximation of u at time step tk, and I define uk plus 1 the approximation of u at time step tk plus 1 by the formula uk plus 1 equal uk minus h times alpha times uk plus 1. You are seeing that uk plus 1 appears on both sides of the equation. That, it is, that is the reason why it is called the implicit Euler method, because uk plus 1 is defined implicitly as a solution to that equation. Now, fortunately, for this simple model problem, you can actually reformulate this equation and get an explicit formula for uk plus 1. So effectively, what we compute is uk plus 1 equal 1 plus h times alpha to the minus 1 times uk. At this point, you might be wondering, why would anybody ever come up with such an American method? The mathematical background and motivation is something that I'm going to provide in the next video. But at this point, we can already tell that the implicit Euler method will behave much more reasonably for any step size h than the explicit Euler method when I applied to this decay problem here. We recall that alpha is a positive constant and that also h is a positive constant. I mean, the step size is positive. So that factor 1 plus h times alpha to the minus 1, as you can easily tell, is going to be a positive number smaller than 1. So the approximation uk plus 1 is obtained from the previous approximation at the previous time step simply by reducing it by a constant factor. That is completely independent of the step size. Even for large step sizes, I still will see this qualitative behavior. So we can reasonably hope that the implicit Euler method will provide much better approximations for this decay problem here than the explicit Euler method, even for, even for time steps that are comparatively large. As we apply the implicit Euler method to our model problem, we see that even for very moderate step sizes, we get fairly good approximations of the true solution. The green line here depicts the numerical solution using the Euler method, using the implicit Euler method for step size h equal to 1 over 1000. And that numerical approximation already looks almost indistinguishable from the true solution. The blue curve here shows you the numerical approximation that I get from the implicit Euler method with a step size h equal 1. That is a really large step size, but already the approximation looks fairly nice. And for example, if our half the step size h equal 1 over 10, the approximation improves. In the next video, we will talk a bit more about the mathematical background for the implicit Euler method. The normal Euler method is also called explicit Euler method in comparison to the implicit Euler method. 
in the, in the larger scheme of things, in the larger scheme of things, the implicit and the explicit Euler methods are representatives of a large class of numerical methods for ordinary differential equations, which are also known as Runge-Kutta methods.